This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Our website is www.exoneradiotv.com and on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. My guest this hour is Ivan Eland. He is a senior fellow and director at the Center on Peace and Liberty. Um, let me see. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, I'm sorry, Center of Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. Uh, Dr. Eland is a graduate of Iowa State University and received an MBA in Applied Economics and a PhD in Public Policy from George Washington University. He has been the director of the Defense Policy Studies at the Cato Institute, and he spent 15 years working for Congress on national security issues, including stints as an investigator for the House Foreign Affairs Committee and the Principal Defense Analyst at the Congressional Budget Office. Joining me now is... Ivan Eland and Ivan, welcome to the Exxon. Great having you with us. Thanks for having me on. What is going on in the world today? We've got, it seems that terrorism is, is not a thing of the past. Look what's happening in Nigeria. 200 girls kidnapped. Nobody can find them. In your opinion, and I know you've studied this, you, you wrote a, an excellent article entitled Imperialism and Nigerian Schoolgirls. I was wondering if you could give us your opinion of, of what is behind the Boko Haram and what we can expect from not only them but other extremist groups in the future. Well, I think uh, this meshes nicely with uh, President Obama's speech on terrorism that he just gave. And I think this is a classic case of one of these uh, uh, Islamist groups that not uh, that are dispersed now around the world. Mm-hmm. Some of them are affiliated with Al Qaeda. Some of them aren't. This one is, is totally Nigerian. It has uh, concerns only about Nigeria. It's probably one of the more vicious groups in the world, actually. But it really doesn't affect U.S. security. And I think uh, the the administration's approach to this, and certainly the administration is not unusual about this. George W. Bush uh, conducted himself in, in the same manner. Uh, we take on everyone else's problems. Now, there's no doubt about the fact that uh, kidnapping these almost 300 schoolgirls is a heinous thing. Is, these yeah. are innocent uh, people, right? But uh, this group has done worse, actually, and nobody really paid attention to it until the schoolgirls became the cause celebre. And, of course, they haven't been killed that we know of. They've been kidnapped, and they're being held... Uh, and there, there has been some negotiations to get them out. So the group apparently is not totally mm-hmm. unreasonable, but uh, certainly it's radical and it's a heinous fact that they did this, but they have slaughtered entire villages. They have uh, shot and burned to death 59 schoolboys uh, prior to this uh, kidnapping the schoolgirls. So, uh, but the, this didn't appear on the radar screen until um, uh, domestic pressure groups in the West started saying uh, we need something done about this. And, of course, Western governments, uh, France, Britain, U.S., and also Israel, have responded. Uh, The problem is their response has probably been counterproductive because the Nigerian government is reluctant to uh, get public assistance uh, from the 
West simply because it feels, and probably rightly so, that it will elevate the status of the group uh, and uh, get, you know, uh, get, the group will get more followers within Nigeria and become an even bigger problem than it is. And of course, as I say, this uh, this type of terrorism, most of these groups now are local, and uh, the United States should be very careful in what it does because uh, we've made enemies of the Pakistani right. Taliban. In fact, we created the Pakistani Taliban. They didn't exist before we uh, did a nation-building war in Afghanistan. And then also, when I say we, I mean the, the U.S. and uh, NATO allies in mm -hmm. Afghanistan. And uh, then uh, we also uh, al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, which may be the most dangerous group. It now attacks U.S. targets, but of course... Uh, it didn't before the United States went in and started helping the government of Yemen during the George Bush administration, uh, you know, some years ago. And so uh, we risk turning these local groups into uh, uh, people who are attacking the United States and the West simply because uh, we have a high visibility. Now, the uh, high visibility assistance to governments or even taking direct military action in the case of drones mm -hmm. in Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan, but uh, the the, uh, the the real uh, crux of this is if you're going to do this and help other countries out, you should do it on the, you know, so it's a quiet type of help sure. rather than public public help. But the the problem is there's a di there's a there's a problem that politicians in the West have. They have to pretend to be doing something or seen as doing something, and of course that negates a surreptitious help to these countries because at home they've got to prove that they're doing something about the Ivan, problem, even if it's not really a U.S. security issue. Ivan, you and I have to take a two-minute commercial break. Please stand by. Exxon Nation. Ivan Eland is our special guest and uh, we'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Have a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, 
then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Welcome back, everyone. Our guest this hour is Ivan Eland. He is the Senior Fellow and Director at the Center on Peace and Liberty. The website is www.independent.org. Uh, Eland, do you think that the advent of social media has certainly played a big part of this Nigerian schoolgirl fiasco? Well, I think uh, social media p- probably plays a part in any crisis now, now or would-be crisis uh, anywhere overseas. So I think, yes, it, it has. It has fueled the, the, the domestic pressure groups uh, in the Western countries have uh, fueled it both through, if you want to call it, old media and new media. Right. And uh, therefore, therefore, I think uh, uh, the politicians are responding by very public help to the Nigerian government. What is the what is the opinion of the American public when it comes to spending this money and this time in yet another area of the world with so many uh, resources being so spread out so thinly around the world? And now with the crisis with the Veterans Administration, it seems that there's being a lot put on the plate of the American public who ultimately end up paying the bill. Well, I think uh, you know, take taken all together, the, the American public. Uh, is sick of warfare, sure. and uh, they're also disgusted that uh, you know we can spend all this money overseas on this and that, but then when it comes to our veterans taking care of them, the people that have gone over and you know sacrificed uh, limbs mm-hmm. or you know other other uh, uh, things like post traumatic stress uh, syndrome and that sort of thing, we we're falling down and uh, taking care of them here in the United States at the veterans hospitals. When it comes to Boko Haram, do you do you see that this type of publicity that is giving this terrorist organization is going to prompt other cells to pick up the pace and to make more daring attacks because they know that they're going to get the publicity, they're going to get the attention that the Boko Haram are getting? Yeah, I think it's a it's a bad model to send out. First of all, terrorists want publicity, and sure. the reason that they want publicity is because they can get more funding and recruit more fighters. And putting them on the U.S. terrorism list when they don't attack the U.S., there are many groups on the U.S. terrorism list that don't attack the U.S., raises their status. Also, when the president comes out and very publicly said, hey, you know, we're, we really want to uh, help the Nigerian government, but the Nigerian government is reluctant and they're incompetent and all this kind of stuff, it's sort of an imperialist attitude that, well, you need to do what we we want you to do because we have to satisfy our domestic, uh, uh, you know. So mm-hmm. I should say certain segments of our domestic uh, opinion here because I think most people, as I just mentioned, are sick of war. But there are groups for every issue. There are groups that pressure for intervention, and the U.S. is accustomed to this sorts of intervention. So the politicians, uh, you know, succumb to the pressure of several of groups. And many people uh, are starting to get fed up with this. And I think that uh, certainly everybody wants those schoolgirls to get out. But the question is, uh, perhaps if we are going to aid uh, the Nigerian government, we need to do so, um, you know, more secretly rather than such a public show of uh, sure. of. Uh, and of course, we're we're criticizing our our government officials here in the United States are criticizing the Nigerian government for being incompetent, for being slow to accept the help, and all that kind of stuff. But of course, the Nigerian government may be right because they know the situation. The problem with all these countries, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Nigeria, uh, Egypt, whatever country we're talking about, uh, our po- our politicians and bureaucrats only know so much about the culture exactly. of these countries, and, and uh, we go crusading in there for this cause or that cause, Mm -hmm. and we usually end up screwing it up because the local government knows that if they publicly uh, are seen as as going back to the colonial oppressors such as Britain and Nigeria, I mean, uh, uh, you know, Boko Haram will get even more followers and will have its uh, status elevated. And I think uh, so that I think the Nigerian government has some very real um, 
uh, problems. Plus, the Nigerian government is the one that's negotiating with 